we specialize in uh, media capacity building with indigenous groups, um, particularly through participatory video. What's key is, is, is the approach that we use, participatory video. It's a collective mm. filmmaking process, so it's not, it's not about one filmmaker who right. controls everything, has an artistic vision, right. tells a story. It's, it really is a collective process in, in terms of um, selecting the themes that really matter to the community that they want to focus on for their films, right through to storyboarding and planning it. It's a collective process to filming it. The camera gets passed around. Mm. The, uh, the crew that, 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 we, that we train up actively go out looking for diverse perspectives, women, elders, children, involve them in the film. And then in the evenings, they show back the rushes uh, every evening or every few nights so the whole community can get involved. The screening has enabled our hub be known in the area whereby we take the footages, edit them, and later we give it back to the community by calling them on a screening and making them understand that what we have filmed is not for our benefit, but it's also for the community benefit. The other important thing is it's entirely in the control in, of indigenous people, of the communities. They control everything. Our role is to facilitate and to train up in the skills. And the way we do that is also pretty key, I think. It's all through games. It's designed for people who've never been formally educated, who may not read and write, because we know that people who live in those communities, people who live through a situation, they're the real experts. And they just need the tools, the right, the right tools to help document and share that knowledge. And video is so versatile because it's an oral media. This westernization has made the people forget their cultures. But now, through these gatherings, we are able to understand that African culture has value other than westernization. When we go back home, we able to tell our fellows that there is something bigger when you treasure and embrace your culture. Yeah. It will be another way of preserving our culture and keeping records, even documentaries of what is happening now for the future generations. Keep our cultures, even remind them what happened in the past, even through songs. You see, there are songs that are played in the videos. So some of the young kids do not know the songs, but if they are played often, they will learn them and they will keep that culture. Talking of the Pan-African Alliance, I feel that I have found my new roots. Because without a culture, you have no identity. And as Africans, we identify ourselves according to the culture. Indigenous peoples controlling their own media, telling their own stories, sharing the incredible work that they're doing to protect the earth, to protect the environment, forests, to uh, preserve their cultures for, for, for the future generations. You see the way the, the Lulundo community are facing eviction threats, the same way it's happening to the Ogiek of Mao uh, and the Sengwir community in, in Embobut Forest. So the strategies that the, uh, the Lulundo Masa are using will be a lesson to us to protect our land so that we do not face the same challenge. Rather than relying on foreigners, um, international trainers from the UK or wherever to, to do all the trainings, it actually should be the indigenous people who train one another and who pass on the skills. So that's what we've been working on very hard to develop the capacity and confidence in our indigenous uh, fellows to uh, be able to visit other communities locally and regionally and offer them training themselves. It will help us address the climate change we are facing, the threats we are facing as a result of communities being affected and not being recognized as the true custodians of their lands. There's a real need for solidarity, uh, international solidarity across borders. I think video can help with that as well. It can really bring to life the causes and struggles of peoples on the ground, at the grassroots, people on the front line of climate change, for example, people who are trying to defend their lands and territories, um, communities who know how to live in, um, in harmony with nature and with their environments, who've taken care of their lands for millennia, but are still being evicted by their governments. Um, 
it's really important that people around the world in the West understand and value uh, the fight that indigenous peoples are engaging with and have been engaged with for hundreds of years um, and support that cause and feel part of it because we're, we're one people, uh, one planet and we all need to work together. We have shared a lot and we have now created the connection for future collaboration.